Workshop handles dozens of VGS jobs every month from all around the world, Europe, Asia, Africa, and more. Today, we'll show you exactly how to program a VGS3 NAG2 from flashing to full variant coding. First, connect your VGS3 unit to the diagnostic interface. Make sure power is stable before flashing. Before we begin the flash, we must ensure the ECU is unlocked and ready to receive data. This involves setting up the correct diagnostic session. Most importantly, we must instruct the ECU to enter the secure flash reprogramming session. This routine bypasses normal operation security and prepares the unit's bootloader to accept the new firmware. A stable connection is paramount here to prevent bricking the unit. We can observe the process percentage climbing steadily as the data is successfully transferred. The software confirms, flash process was successful. The VGS now has a fresh, up-to-date operating system ready for the next layer of configuration. Next, we move to variant coding to tell the VGS how to function within this specific vehicle. This section highlights the lower level communication protocols. We are utilizing diagnostic services to ensure the VGS is in the correct session mode for memory access. These packets confirm everything from the security key exchange to maintaining an extended diagnostic session, all crucial groundwork before reading and writing sensitive data. Now we address the security synchronization directly. The most essential piece of data linking the VGS to the vehicle is the VIN vehicle identification number. We read the current value, which may be blank or generic, and then manually write the car's specific VIN. This links the VGS to the vehicle's identity permanently. EEPROM data clone. We are meticulously reading data from the working original VGS, or a backup file, and writing it block by block onto the newly flashed unit. Blocks 11 through 17 typically hold critical adaptation values and the rolling codes used for the drive authorization system. This careful transfer is our alternative to the failed online SCN process, ensuring the unit is accepted by the EIS and the engine ECU.
We move back to the familiar X-Entry interface to perform the manufacturer-mandated function tests. First, check the actual values for drive authorization. Next, we attempt the teach-in of the drive authorization system. This function is designed to personalize the unit and finalize the handshake. We finalize the process by performing the mandatory teach-in of the selection range sensor for precise gear alignment. Finally, we execute the clear fault memory to clean up the diagnostic system. The unit is now flashed, coded, and adapted. The successful road test confirms that our combination of advanced cloning and adaptation techniques has effectively circumvented the restricted online SCM pathway, fully restoring the VGS unit. Leave a like and subscribe to Auto Explain channel. Leave a comment if you are having problems with your car. Goodbye and see you again.